The Meridian Gate, the main entrance to the Forbidden City, is as ancient as the Imperial Palace itself. Once only royalty and the privileged were allowed to enter, but now the gate is open to all. The 453 exhibits in the gallery quietly await the arrival of visitors from China and abroad. Here, people are taken back in time to the year 1420, when the Forbidden City was first completed. The Red Walls have safeguarded a palace of seemingly unfathomable depth. The Forbidden City has witnessed so many historic moments in the past 600 years that eventually it became a part of history itself. The exhibition, Everlasting Splendor, Six Centuries at the Forbidden City, gives a detailed introduction to this imperial palace which is the embodiment of the ingenuity, craftsmanship and dedication that have been passed down from generation to generation. East Prosperity Gate where attendees of court meetings were admitted in the Qing Dynasty is now the exit gate for visitors. History and reality often travel in opposite directions. A few days ago, the beams on top of East Prosperity Gate became shaky and needed immediate inspection and repair. Conservation of these ancient structures is a primary duty of the Department of Architectural Heritage. The rotten beams are transported back to the department. They've found out where the problem lies. <laughs> the next step is to draft and finalize a repair plan and wait for the right time to put it into action. The repair work is a time-consuming process. Walk through the East Prosperity Gate and you will find the Department of Architectural Heritage. Established in December 1958, it oversees the research and conservation of all heritage architecture, which is an integral part of the exhibition Everlasting Splendor, and therefore, the department is playing a key role in ensuring the exhibition's success. The curators have decided that the exhibition will look beyond the walls of In 1988, 
Wu Wei started working at the Palace Museum Archaeology Institute in 2013. Since then, he spent most of his time excavating in the field. After laboring in the field for days, Wu Wei is finally reunited with his colleagues from the Palace Museum today. The sight of these relics, which were crafted before the Forbidden City was built, make the hearts of experts from the Palace Museum race with joy. Bricks and tiles tend to last longer than wooden structures. This magnificent palace was reduced to dust, but its debris and the relief on them still remind us of the power and wealth it stood for in the Ming Dynasty. Fengyang is the hometown of Zhu Yuanzhang, the first emperor of the Ming Dynasty. In 1369, the newly crowned Zhu Yuanzhang decided to make his hometown the capital of the Ming Dynasty and build an imperial palace here. No expense was spared when building this colossal architectural marvel. But six years later, when the palace was beginning to take shape, Zhu Yuanzhang called the whole project off abruptly for reasons unknown. This deserted piece of land was once the foundation of a palace that was designed to last forever. Ha 的 construction of palaces in ancient China was defined by precision and meticulousness. Craftsmen divided the techniques involved into eight types, and the first one was used when laying the foundations. The technique used to build the foundations of the Forbidden City was lost in history, and conducting a large-scale underground survey of the imperial palace is not feasible. But this abandoned palace, which was built in the same era, allows us to see how the best craftsmen in the early Ming Dynasty laid the foundations of a palace. The most prominent building of the palace, which could be viewed as the primitive hall of supreme harmony, was supposed to stand here. Its foundations consist of layer upon layer of rammed earth and stone debris. Eighteen layers have already been excavated. The technique was inherited and improved upon by the craftsmen who built the Forbidden City. This sturdy and strengthened foundation has not only provided a stable footing for the buildings resting upon it over the past 600 years, but also stood as a symbol of eternity for the ruling dynasty, an everlasting splendor.
Zhu Yuanzhang didn't complete the palace of his dreams, but his son, Zhu Di, recreated it in Beijing 50 years later. However, the two palaces had stood separated from each other for 600 years, until components from the father's palace in Fangyang were transported to the sons for the first time in the year 2020. A solid foundation is not enough to make a palace stand forever. Roofs have played a key role in shielding the traditional Chinese wooden architecture from centuries of wind and rain. The glazed roof tiles were laid side by side, overlapping each other. Although they're waterproof and fire resistant, they do have weaknesses. Records from the Imperial Household Department showed that trained personnel were organised to climb up and clean the roofs of the Forbidden City in each spring and autumn. Legend has it that the roofs of the Imperial Palace have some sort of magical property that keeps birds and grasses away. It's a shame that legend is not true. Seeds of plants, either carried by the wind or hidden within bird droppings, fall and land on the roofs. If they are allowed to root and grow, they can damage the tiles. One interesting fact is that different roofs are often covered by one specific kind of plant. Inspired by the exterior design of the Hall of Supreme Harmony, the Qianglong Emperor had the Hall of Imperial Supremacy built as a residence for him after his retirement. It was in this hall that the Emperor held a famous banquet for a thousand elders. <laughs> We don't know if the emperor was aware that Chinese foxglove thrives on the roof of this grand hall. The wild grasses are hard to get rid of and roof cleaning has to be carried out regularly in the Forbidden City. The courtyard housing the Department of Architectural Heritage is littered with brick debris, broken tiles and rotten timber, which were once parts of this ancient palace. The glazed roof tiles borrowed from the Fangyang County Museum date back to the Ming Dynasty and will appear in the exhibition Another team of curators, fascinated by a more unique type of tile, are busy studying them. Chen Fuji, a carpenter who's been working at the Palace Museum for more than two decades, is making a special architectural model for the upcoming exhibition.
The Department of Architectural Heritage wants this model made to demonstrate a special type of roof tile, rather than the structure of the building. These one millimeter thick tiles are semi transparent like tissue paper and give off a pearly glimmer. They're hard, but can easily break when you try to cut them. This type of roof tile is only found on parts of the eaves of the Hall of Mental Cultivation. For a long time, people believed that they were probably crafted from a special kind of sheet mica. The roof tiles were taken down when the Hall of Mental Cultivation went through a major renovation, and it was concluded that they're actually made from shells of the window pane oyster, not sheet mica. Zheng Chung from the Department of Architectural Heritage has been looking for years, but still hasn't found shells that meet the standards of the original. If we want Shichun大概是十二、十三公分的样子。那么我们要加工成这样一片方形的明来的话，它至少也是要比这个要大一圈的。那可能确实不等它长到这个岁数，就就已经被捞起来或者被捡起来了，就很困难。As of now, in the whole of Beijing, this kind of shell tile is only found on parts of the eaves of the Hall of Mental Cultivation. The shells from this species, from the Athyrus genus, were popular on the southeast coast of China. But how did they find their way to the Imperial Palace? Who was it built for? Did it have anything to do with Qianlong Emperor's trips to the south? We still don't know the answers to these questions. The Palace of Eternal Spring tells a different and better known story. The Forbidden City was immersed in a festival atmosphere on New Year's Day, 1750, but the then 40-year-old Qianlong Emperor was, in contrast, in a state of grief as he stood alone in the Palace of Eternal Spring mourning his wife, Empress Xiao Shanchun, 
who had passed away two years ago. After her death, the Emperor ordered all her things left untouched in the palace. In the following ten years, the Emperor often visited the palace where he thought about his late wife. And he only agreed as the Empress's things moved away to make space for the new resident when he passed the throne to his son at the age of 85. The palace is not only a witness to a Qianlong Emperor's love for his wife, but also features colourful frescoes on its roof and eaves, which were repainted at the request of the Empress Dowager Soshi when she lived here. Apart from helping shield the wooden structures underneath from wind and rain, like roof tiles do, frescoes also brighten up the quarters in the palace with their vivid colours. Visitors are often awed by their exquisite appearance, but the complicated procedures and unique techniques involved in the making of them remain largely unknown. Yang Hong is an expert in wall paintings in the Forbidden City, and her former classmate Wang Guangbin specializes in making replicas of these paintings. The central sections of the beams of this corridor in the Palace of Eternal Spring are covered by Suzhou-style frescoes, depicting people and landscapes that are typically found to the south of the lower reaches of the Yangtze River. The replicas of this fresco will become a highlight of the exhibition, Everlasting Splendor, as it showcases a changing forbidden city during the late Qing Dynasty. Now the tracing is done, they can start to make a replica. The last step is to apply the gold leaf. This is the The frescoes in the Forbidden City are characterized by their lavish use of gold. China saw a significant increase in its gold production in the Qing Dynasty and the progress in the manufacturing techniques of gold leaf. Gold leaf became more frequently used in frescoes during the High Qing era and the glittering imperial palace became a symbol of wealth and prosperity. Yeah, I think it's like this. Yeah, it's like this. Yeah, it's like this.
八月二号，放心备量稿，我看几天啊？一天、两天、三天、四天、五天、六天、七天、八天、九天。The Department of Architectural Heritage has been making replicas of frescoes for years, using these traditional techniques. Although making replicas is far more complicated and time-consuming compared with simply taking pictures of the original, it can better preserve the details of the frescoes and is an essential part of fresco study and conservation in the Forbidden City. <laughs> Now, these replicas will be stored in the warehouse of the Department of Architectural Heritage. These paintings, jointly finished by Yang Hong and Wang Guangbin, will become important references for future fresco restorers. You can often find all kinds of porcelain masterpieces in the office of the ceramics branch, part of the Department of Conservation Science. Splendor. This is where the Department of Conservation Science was located five years ago. Now, the whole department has moved to the restoration centre in the western part of the Palace Museum, which is nicknamed the Hospital of Cultural Relics. The department not only prides itself on its staff mastery of traditional techniques, but also boasts world-class equipment, allowing it to attract young talent who have a shared enthusiasm for the conservation and protection of cultural relics. <laughs> These ceramic tiles, taken from the remaining part of the spirit pool, were manufactured in Germany, a country far from China. Located inside the Palace of Prolonging Happiness, the Western-style spirit pool was the last building constructed by the Qing government in the Forbidden City. This unique building was left unfinished following the Qing dynasty's downfall in 1911. If it had been completed back then, the spirit pool would have become the first aquarium in China.
包下来的时候，有些是在墙上，有些是在这个瓷砖上。对啊，这里记记得是德国维宝这个品牌的样子，包括现在很多卫浴产品也在用。而且泰坦尼克号当时也是用这个。By piecing together the trademark on the tiles, researchers from the Department of Architectural Heritage concluded that they were manufactured by a German company founded in the 1740s, which is still in operation today. More than a century ago, these tiles imprinted with delicate patterns travelled a long way to reach their destination, the Forbidden City. As part of the spirit pool, they now act as witnesses to the cultural exchanges that took place between China and the West. It's hard to tell what motivated the Qing government to initiate the construction of a pool solely for entertainment purposes when the dynasty was in such peril. Those who participated in the construction are long gone, but the restored ceramic tiles lying in a corner of the gallery are silent witnesses to the end of the 500-year-long construction of the Imperial Palace. Xi'an Ping, who joined the Department of Architectural Heritage in 2014, has been collecting materials concerning the renovation work conducted in the Forbidden City since 1949. As a curator of the exhibition Everlasting Splendor, she's planning the exhibit showcasing the inheritance of woodworking skills. She found an important lead in her research, an old group photo of people who participated in the renovation of the first watchtower in the Forbidden City after the founding of the New China. The watchtowers seen as iconic buildings in the Imperial Palace, are the result of a combination of complex structures and beautiful design that Chinese architecture is so famous for. A watchtower has nine roof beams, 19 pillars and 72 ridge poles. The past 600 years have seen them go through repeated cycles of damage and repair. Modern research and conservation of these towers started in the 1920s. Zhu Qichen initiated the renovation work of the watchtowers in 1931. The Society for the Study of Chinese Architecture he founded examined and measured the watchtowers and other buildings in the Forbidden City leaving the invaluable engineering drawings and manuscripts we see today. This was the first time Chinese people studied and recorded their findings of the palace using modern architectural science. Since then, architects armed with modern techniques and craftsmen who inherited their skills from their predecessors crossed paths and joined forces. In 1956, a leaky roof caused severe damage to the wooden structures of the Northeast Watchtower and the largest, most complex and most difficult repair project since the founding of the New China was launched in the palace. In this photo, you can not only find senior experts from the Forbidden City like Shan Shi Yuan and Yu Zhou Yun, but also the most renowned carpenters of their generations like Ma Jin Kao and Wen Ke Liang. This project was a successful cooperation 
between scholars and craftsmen. Most of the people in this photo have passed away and many of them didn't leave their names. Eager to find out more about the story behind this photo, Xi Yanping decides to go and look for those who are still alive. Chai 您对我们有 Most of the names of the craftsmen who helped build the palace were lost in history and we know little about them. But now, the names of these carpenters have been found and proudly displayed beside the photo. Thanks to their work, the Northwest Watchtower was restored to its original splendor and is still standing today. This project gave the craftsmen a chance to hone and pass down their skills, leaving a comprehensive and detailed record of the design and engineering process. Because of their hard work, ancient architectural skills can be passed down to later generations. Xia Rongxiang joined the Palace Museum in 1975 and had been working there for 42 years by the time of his retirement in 2017. As a third generation carpenter, Mr. Xia participated in the repair work of two watchtowers. The opening of the exhibition is just around the corner. Mr. Xia has been invited over to help improve the design of the exhibit by Di Yajin. He takes out the woodworking tools he used more than 30 years ago. Being able to participate in the renovation of a watchtower is the honor of a lifetime for a carpenter. Xia Rongxiang and his seniors took part in the repair work for the Southeast Watchtower in 1981, and by 1985, Xia Rongxiang became a core member of the team participating in the renovation of the Southwest Watchtower.
Repairing a watchtower involves a staggering number of different wooden components. Chai 这会儿就是遇到困难，没有什么，那只能往前走。Xia Rong is visiting the gallery before the exhibition begins. The traditional tools used by carpenters have been made in line with his suggestions. 有有人的事儿，有东西的事儿，还是人是主要的，材料不行，你可以选那个你认识他啊，什么是潮音，什么是潮阳的，这是什么地儿？松木放在什么地儿有用，还是人的问题。哎，所以这种照片特别的特别的
roof charms from the abandoned palace in Feng Yang, replicas of the frescoes in the Palace of Eternal Spring. The blue ceramic tiles that witness the downfall of the Qing Dynasty are presented together in this gallery, celebrating the 600th birthday of the Forbidden City. History is created by people. The exhibits are witnesses to generations of dedication, which has kept the Forbidden City alive and strong. This magnificent palace, with its characteristic red walls and glazed yellow tiles, is an expression of countless people's time and effort, and a symbol of an undying legend.